Hi everyone, I'm Miss Brianna from the Hopewell Ranch Library. Bob News has asked me to introduce this week's trivia video. The trivia questions in this video are from authors who write books for middle grade readers. If you're new to these trivia videos, you should know that the authors will ask a trivia question and then pause before they give the answer. If you need more time, you can just hit the pause button on your screen. Have fun! Hi everybody, my name is Lisa Greenwald. I have a little bit of trivia for you about the friendship list, which is oops, 11 before 12, 12 before 13, 13 and counting, and 13 and three quarters. So, you ready? Why is Golfy called Golfy? It's his nickname and nicknames are very popular at camp, but how did he get the nickname Golfy? Ready for the answer? Okay, so before he came to camp, he filled out a questionnaire so that the counselors could get to know him. And he wrote down that his favorite sport was golf. So when he came to camp and they went around and they talked about his favorite sport and favorite things, favorite ice cream, just, you know, icebreakers to get to know each other, he announced as a little boy that his favorite sport was golf. And then soon after, everybody at camp started calling him Golfy. Hope you like my books. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Jake Burt, and I'm the author of Cleo Porter and the Body Electric. In this novel, the main character Cleo learns from a computer program named Miss Vain. What does Vain stand for? VAIN is an acronym standing for Virtual Adaptive Instructional Network. One, I'm Christine Kendall, author of The True Definition of Neva Being. It's a story of the 12-year-old girl's political awakening as she struggles to regain the confidence she had as a younger child. And in the book, Neva's granddad volunteers at the local hospital. So the trivia question is, what does granddad actually do at the hospital? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it, and I'll even throw out a clue. It has something to do with babies. So the answer is, granddad holds babies at the hospital because babies need love just like everyone else. So thanks so much. I hope you enjoy the book and wishing you lots of love. Hello, my name is Jennifer Nielsen. For your trivia question today, I'm going to use my historical novel, Words on Fire. This is based on the true story of the Lithuanian book smugglers who were smuggling banned and illegal books into their country as a way of saving Lithuania from the Russian Empire. But in our own country, every year, there are books that become banned or challenged, books that maybe people don't want anybody else to read. So my trivia question for you is, which very popular fantasy series has appeared on that challenged and banned books list almost every year since the first book was released? The answer is the Harry Potter series, which just happens to be one of my very favorite book series. If you want to read more about people who uh, defied uh, the challenge and bans on books, then please check out Words on Fire. Oh, hi, nice to see you. I'm Jen Janeri. I'm the author of my mixed up Berry Blue Summer, which is about a girl named June who needs a big slice of courage one summer when she's entering the county fair pie competition in Vermont. And the author of Muffled, which is the story of Amelia, who in fifth grade discovers that she needs to learn to play an instrument, either choir or flute or trombone. And it still feels like making noise on purpose, but with an unlikely new friend, Madge, Amelia learns to handle her sound sensitivity and step out of her comfort zone. So I have a question for you. If you haven't read this book, you may not know the answer yet, but hopefully you'll read this book. In it, Amelia and Madge go trick-or-treating together for Halloween. And I wonder if you can guess what does Amelia dress up as for Halloween? I'll just read while you think about it. Are you
Are you ready? Well, she's the unconventional girl and she and her dad make a homemade Halloween costume that is a Charlie card, which is a transit card for riding the T in Boston, the subway to her favorite place, the Boston Public Library. I hope you'll check out my books. Have a great day. Hi, Bye. my name is Janet Sumner Johnson and I'm the author of two books, The Last Great Adventure of the PB&J Society in Middle Grade and Help Wanted Must Love Books, which is a picture book. My friend Bob at the library asked if I would be willing to do a trivia question about my middle grade book. And so here we go, are you ready? On the cover of my book, you can see that my two main characters, Annie and Jason, bury something in the ground right there. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So my question to you is why do they bury the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the ground? Got it? Do, 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 do. A little Jeopardy timing. All right, do you think you know it? It's because the sandwiches get smushed and then they're gross and no one wants to eat them. And so Annie and Jason feel bad for the sandwiches and so they bury them in the ground so they can become food for the worms. And that's why. Hope you enjoyed my trivia question and have a great day. Hi, I'm Julia the author of Eva Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch, and I'm here to share a fun piece of trivia. So Eva is a story about a girl, 12-year-old girl with just a pinch of magic who has to pass her witch's test or she'll, she'll lose her powers forever. And in her world, uh, there is a special fruit called cloudberry. So, true or false, is cloudberry a real fruit or a fantasy fruit? So the answer is true. Cloudberry is actually a real fruit. Um, it's sweet, sour, and very tasty. And even though lots of the food in Eva's world seems magical, that's actually something that's in the real world here. See you. Hello, I'm Donna Higuera, and this is my book, Lupe Wong Won't Dance. And I'm going to ask you a trivia question about it. In the book, Lupe's best friend is Andy. And Andy has an interest that is a little unusual and a bit gross. She collects owl puke balls and dissects them. She gets the bones and from the bones, she has constructed a mouse city with bony inhabitants. What is the name of that city? Time is up. The answer is New Yak. I'm going to read from this. The rest of the desk is a miniature model of a mouse city. A golden, a golden red Welcome to New Yak sign is set in swirly letters like it's an English village. We had a few ideas like Barfsburg and Chunksylvania and so on, but we settled on New Yak because it sounded classy. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Fleur Bradley. I'm the author of Midnight at the Barclay Hotel. You can see the cover right behind me. Um, Midnight at the Barclay Hotel is kind of an Agatha Christie style mystery for kids. There are several suspects, they're all stuck at the Barclay Hotel, and they're all there to solve a murder mystery, right along with three kids, JJ, Penny, and Emma, who are tagging along thinking they are going to do some ghost hunting, some reading, and that they're, uh, they're not really there to solve a murder mystery. So it's a really fun story. I'm very proud of it, and I hope you get a chance to read it. Now, as far as my question goes, uh, Midnight at the Barclay Hotel is a fictional a story based in a fictional hotel, the Barclay Hotel, but the Barclay Hotel is based on a real-life hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. Now, what's the name of the hotel? And I'll give you a few minutes to look it up. And the answer is the Stanley Hotel. It's in Estes Park, Colorado, reportedly haunted. If you ever get a chance to visit it and you have a haunted experience, let me know. I hope you get a chance to read Midnight at the Barclay Hotel and keep reading. Hey there, Mercer County Public Library patrons. I am Alan Gratz, the author of a number of books 
for young readers, including uh, Allies, which is all about D-Day, and Grenade, which is about the Battle of Okinawa, and Refugee, which is the story of three different kids in three different time periods in three different parts of the world, all trying to, uh, to, to, all driven from their homes by violence and trying to find some place of safety for themselves and their families, which also has a World War II angle in it. So I've written about a lot of different wars and a lot of different battles and, and, and that kind of thing. And so I have a uh, war-related trivia question for you. So my question is, what is the longest war in United States history? What war did the United States participate in for the longest of all the wars that we fought in? So is it World War One? Is it World War Two? Is it the American Civil War? Is it uh, Korea? Is it Vietnam? Is it some other war? Take a minute. Take a few seconds. Think about what you think is the longest war in American history. All right, got an answer? Got a guess? Okay, it's none of those wars that I just mentioned. In fact, the longest war in U.S. history is one we are currently fighting in right now, at least when I film this in December of 2020. It is the war in Afghanistan. We have been at war, uh, by, when I'm filming this right now, we've been at war there for almost 20 years, more than 19 years. And the whole reason we are at war in Afghanistan is because of the events of 9-11, September 11th, 2001. We went to war in Afghanistan in the months right after that, and we have been at war there since. And I write about that war and about the day that spawned that war in a book called Ground Zero. This is my new book. It comes out uh, in February 2nd of 2021. So you can't check it out from the library right this second when I'm recording this, but it comes out so soon I went ahead and pitched it to you. You can go ahead and put it on hold and be one of the first people to read it when it comes out. It's called Ground Zero, and it's a story of two different kids. The first is a kid named Brandon. He is nine years old, and he is in the North Tower of the World Trade Center on the morning of September 11, 2001, when the first plane hits, and he has to try and survive. And the second story is told from the point of view of a girl named Rashmina. She is 11 years old. She lives in a small village in Afghanistan, and she is experiencing her own version of 9-11 in 2019, when her village becomes a battleground between the United States and the Taliban. And I weave back and forth between those two stories, so you can see the day that it all started, and where we are almost 20 years later because of 9-11. So I hope you guys will check this out. Thank you to the Mercer County Public Library for inviting me to do a trivia question. I love trivia. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys will stay safe and keep reading. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned about some great books and authors. I'd really like to thank the authors for taking the time to send us in such great trivia questions. If you'd like to place a hold on any of the books you heard about today, you can visit our website at www.mcl.org. Also, be sure to check our website for the most up-to-date information about our hours as well as what is available at the library. If you'd like to share this video, please tag us at MCLSNJ. Thanks again for joining me today. Bye!